So welcome to another weekly charting analysis webinar. We're on the 20th of June 2016 and it's the final week before the big one, before the, the Brexit referendum. And obviously it's roiling markets. Um, we saw a big rollover, as I'm sure you know, last week. But right in the final couple of days, we, thought we saw thing, everything turn around and that's that's getting extended today, big time, uh, looking especially at the British Pound, also the FTSE 100, seeing huge gains. Biggest one day gain in the British Pound since 2008. So, those who were predicting volatility, yep, you got it right there. Calling direction, definitely slightly trickier. It's really turning on the flip of a coin at the moment. So that's our risk warnings out of the way. <coughs> so I'm going to jump straight to the British Pound. Apologies to uh, anyone outside the UK. But I think probably no apologies due there. You know that Brexit is obviously front and centre in markets at the moment. This is a chart of the British Pound. <coughs> now obviously this is a charting webinar and i um, slightly biased towards discussing the charts and the benefits of looking at charts but um, just look at this uh, you know look at how markets have reacted from our from our support here now I've you know I've, I've gone through these two support levels here down here but really you know if you had your um, if you had your buy order in and around the low then you know we've just spiked 200 pips in a single day from that support even if you'd just taken profit there it was a nice tidy little trade but if you'd held on two days later we're now at the top of the range again and we've basically paused for the moment bang on the initial peak that we made back in February so we're just we're trading right back and forth within the range here and you can see that you know as the polls were uh, you may have seen from our weekly email that I sort of did a little chart uh, narrating how the polls had moved sterling around during this period of time the polls were mostly f starting to f uh, mostly favoring remaining in the EU and then it was during this sort of period that we saw a sharp downturn big turn in volatility obviously getting closer to the vote as well um, polls started to show favoring a Brexit favoring a leave and now just over the you know over the weekend uh, we've had this big gap through uh, the, the sort of support zone here I'd argue uh, to push us right up to the, um, the top of the range. So 144, kind of the middle of the range of this 140 to 147 that we've been in for um, for quite a while now since we've had that first drop down. So I know this is obviously very uh, counter the current momentum, um, but my assumption still here would be that sometime between here, maybe not right here, it's possible, but sometime up towards the peak that we saw in um, you know, on um, on the 3rd of May, right in this 147.60 type vicinity, that there's a good chance that some sort of poll comes out in favour of leaving again, and markets get rocked and we've rolled over again. So very tempting to go with the current momentum. Uh, but we are still in a trading range. Now that, obviously, any trades at the top of this range here could obviously go wrong. Um, but the, good, the nice thing about a range trade, especially a nice wide range, like 140 to 147, 700 pips, is that uh, you can take trades at the top of the trading range with a low risk to reward ratio. So, you know, you have your trades near, the, you have your, your shorts near the highs. If they go wrong, you just have your stop above the high somewhere um, obviously up to you know your decision as to how f how much above the high um, the higher you have your stop um, the less risk there is of getting stopped out but obviously the the bigger greater financial risk you're putting yourself under but if we did drop down towards the bottom of the range again you know that's that's 700 pips on offer for risking a small amount so that's that's the nice thing about a very well defined trading range um, obviously it may not go the whole 700 pips and you have to manage the trade according to your system um, often t you know with the benefit of hindsight this this trade at the bottom you know best holding it to the top of the range but um, sometimes that's not the case we easily could have gapped down here had the polls been different so 
there we have it. So, you know, we're in range trading conditions. All worth, also worth noting that um, we're back here, which hasn't worked too well in terms of here, but we broke down from this rising trend line. We're back here testing the underside of this raising trend line. And we're back up above the 60 mark. And you can see here that about 65 has been resistance in the RSI recently. So maybe a little push up to 65 into this rising trend line on the RSI could be another layer of resistance on top of the top of the trading range and the 200 day moving average. Let's have a look at um, Euro Sterling as well. Another good example of a good, uh, whoops, a good technical level. When we've obviously had this uh, resistance zone on for a while, the the rather kind of, you know, and I said it at the time that the the, the head and shoulders pattern was tricky because there really was no obvious neckline. So the, the 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 height of the shoulders was very nice. So here we have left shoulder. You know, right shoulder, but where you know, looking at this, where did we have the, um, where did we have the neckline? So if, you know, if you'd taken this uh, as the breakdown, you know, maybe you'd done okay here. But if you'd taken this March uh, March tenth low as the neckline, pretty much faked out on the breakdown here. We've gone all the way back up, and then we were talking last week extensively about these long tails beneath uh, beneath the eighty level. And eventually that, that that selling pressure, which is often in here, where we tried to, you know, buyers have pushed the market up, the sellers have pushed it right back down again. It happened four days in a row. Eventually, we closed down here. That was the lowest in one, two, three days. And then we just broke down again on Friday, and then obviously gapped lower, matching that rally in the British pound today. So there isn't quite the equivalent in terms of support level as well defined as the uh, 79 level and it's perhaps on these sort of occasions where when the support is not so obvious you know I've, I've obviously drawn in the 0 0.7650 which I think you know has does seem to have acted a bit of a pivot since it was reversed strongly on that March 10th uh, that would be a cons an area to consider um, but otherwise the trailing stop Forgot to mention before that any questions at all, obviously feel free to, to send them through the, the QA or the Q and A or the chat box. So let's keep the um the focus Brexit here. So let's move to the um the FTSE one hundred. So again, quite, quite. I mean, it's it's very choppy trading, and it's it, it's certainly um, tricky. And anyone who'd been trading this head and shoulders pattern, out of luck here. The objective of that head and shoulders was down below five seven hundred. Uh, we obviously not met that whatsoever. We've run into this this support zone in and around the five nine hundred, and rallied pretty strongly from there. And um, it would appear that if we're maintaining, say, this is the the support zone around the 5900 and this is the resistance zone around 6500 it now looks like we're going to push back towards the top of the uh, the trading zone and and trades in this area which are basically in the middle of the, the trading range have just a smaller probability of working out because we're not really in a well-defined trend here um, you, you know you can certainly trade on us getting to the top of the range but I'd say if you do place a trade here around 6200 6250 your downside to the bottom of the range is right down to 5900 again but if you're assuming we stay in the range the upside is only up to 6500 so your, your risk basically equals your reward so that's that's you know you're you're more than likely to come out behind if you consistently take those kinds of trades so that's that's UK markets but if we look over to the US um, which is also rallying alongside the sort of general improvement in and risk sentiment today uh, it's a, it's a little bit more bullish well a lot more bullish this is this is the uh, you know we, the, we've had this on the, the chart for the last few well many many webinars this is the record peak um, up here around the 18 just above 18 uh, 300 so we've had this nice bounce off the uh, the broken falling trend line and now it looks like the market's going to have to challenge. Um, you know, I've got the 
17,930 in there because that's been respected a few times, but really 18,000 is the big one. We need to break back through 18,000 and then that gives us, that opens the door to those record highs again. Still at the moment we are uh, in a trading range. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, you know, we made a lower low here and uh, but we previously made a higher high so you know kind of chopping left and right um, there's not really a too well defined upper barrier you know I'd say it's just very choppy around the 18,000 mark which is also the peaks from back in November so quite a wide range in terms of resistance this is the you know this peak up to the record high but you could equally say there's another range from here down to 90 uh, to, to 17,930 so in terms of quite where the breakout take p takes place is it, tricky when you have such a wide resistance zone. So I would say that you know the most clear cut breakout to a new trend would be a close for the week above that record high which is a f you know, still a fair way from where we are now and I think below there still like the FTSE 100 even though this chart looks more bullish is um, there th for me that the, the, the fact that we're still in a range adds the bias to the downside so just be aware of that if you know even if you're taking some short-term trades going along the market with the with the momentum at the moment be arranged be aware that we're still in a, in a range um, in my opinion at least and and that adds risk to the downside in and around the 18,000 mark and above Um, you know, obviously I've, I haven't really mentioned any market events barring Brexit. Um, so I should, I should say that my opinion, I've been saying it all along, is that um, in, in the end we vote to remain. It's not a personal opinion or anything, it's just how I, how I see it playing out. And um, that's obviously being reflected in the market at the moment, but that, you know, that can change quickly. Um, there's a lot of people who share the opinion that, it, that the result will be remain. But if you've got a big position, you know, you're a long investor, uh, long the FTSE, you know, long stocks in general, uh, but you see an increasing risk of us exiting, which you consider a downside risk to markets, I think that's a fair assumption to make that, you know, the pound would drop, FTSE would probably drop if we did vote to exit. Um, you know, you're having some protection. You're, you're basically doing some hedging trades. Um, and so, you, you know, you're... Um, you know you're uh, you're buying put options or you're just you know you could be on our platform obviously just selling the index when maybe you have a portfolio of, of stocks and shares uh, but you're selling one of these index products uh, different ways of hedging but obviously as that vote came, uh, the uh, the poll came out over the weekend um, saying that actually the remain camp was ahead again and a lot of people just peeling off some if not all of that protection that that, um, that sterling and the FTSE may drop. So that all adds to the volatility here. I think the, um, the, one, the one of the good things about this is it's very, very hard to call the reaction in markets in the, uh, in the lead up to the, uh, the vote it will be very telling on how markets move after the vote. If we get some breakouts on that big news of the uh, of the vote, you know that could have some good momentum behind it. And so we could actually break out of some of these ranges that we've been talking about and uh, open up to some trending markets, which tends to be a little bit easier to trade. You know, you, when it when it's a trend, I mean, this is very simple stuff, but always worth reminding yourself when there's a trend, the direction is taken care of. Uh, you just have to time it. And um, a lot of evidence to say that really, you know, uh, timing is not the main thing when you're in a trend. You just have to get in there and, and ride it. Easier said than done, obviously. So let's just look at how uh, Europe is reacting to all of this. We've got the Germany 30. Again, in terms of, uh, you know, very difficult to call exactly politically and economically how the Brexit will, will work out, but using the charts, working pretty beautifully right now in the uh, the Germany 30 we've had this we've had this support zone in since April with those two lows and it's bounced perfectly from there so you know if you just had a simple buy resting order um, at 
you know, in and around this eight, April 7th low, you know, that's worked out pretty beautifully at this point. And uh, we're just running into a bit of potential resistance, I would say, from this broken rising trend line in around uh, the round number of 10,000. Obviously, round numbers in themselves, a bit, bit of a cause for resistance. A bit above there, we've got the 200-day moving average at about the uh, sort of 10 100 mark so 10 100 in itself been a bit of a pivot in the past so round number slash trend line resistance around 10,000 and then um, 10 100 uh, has been a pivot in the past and the the 200 day moving average so definitely um, some some strong resistance in those areas um, could mean you know depending on how polls work out how sentiment changes uh, we could could roll away from those areas, or if we get if we do get a breakout, you know, any tr short trades are not going to work out. But obviously, that would be very telling that there there is some inherent strength in the market, and we could push a decent bit further from there, up towards that uh, 10 500 that's uh, been the top in the year so far for the for the Germany 30. Should mention the other big event this week, aside from Brexit, that actually comes before it is tomorrow. Janet Yellen is going to be testifying um, before the the Senate Banking Committee, Congress on Wednesday, and she's going to be summarising the Fed's outlook on monetary policy. The fact that the Fed not only stayed on hold, uh, but also were fairly dovish in their statement, um, has 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 helped this this return to to risk sentiment this week. You know, things started to turn last week before we had any change in the polls. Now may be debatable to, to some extent that the uh, the death of MP Joe Cox has somehow sh shifted the sentiment um, yeah I, I th I th I'm sure it's you know if anything it's a negative for the the leave campaign it does tarnish the image a bit but you know, how, how negative is, is is fairly debatable um, you would hope that people are not basing their decisions on on that but um, you know s some will be you know um, so that certainly played a part, but you can't um, can't get too tunnel visioned, as I mentioned here in my um, you know my uh, in my note here in the insights. Um, also, central banks are still as important as uh, as important as ever. So, since we've st uh, we've looked at a couple of currencies already, um, let's let's go back to a good example of what's. Um, <coughs> in, you know of how to judge the risk on risk off nature of markets at the moment so dollar yen bit of a tricky one here because they're both being perceived as haven currencies uh, both the dollar and the yen so we're getting a bit of a pickup off uh, off 104 we've not had a close below 104 yet trend is still very much down and we're below the level that we've been highlighting for a while, which is this uh, 105 round number, but also the the 105.30, uh, we've, if you notice here, where we found the support, um, not not an, not you know not a coincidence. I think that it's at this peak from from May in 2013, which is where we've you know we're, we're rebound a little bit from here. But the rebound's been fairly shallow, pretty weak, and again, it's because Yes, as the market rallies here, it, it's dumping yen, but it's also dumping dollars, um, particularly given that that the the, the more dovish Fed. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Feel que feel free to to ask questions anytime. So while we're at it, I just haven't had a look at uh, euro dollar yet. Still in this very choppy long-term range, capped by about 115. Again, euro a little bit tricky because it's um, you know we're trading euro sterling, but we're also trading euro euro dollar. So sterling rallying here, but dollar is um, is weakening. So euro dollar, you know, sort of sitting in the middle. You, you know, just based on the assumption that sterling is kind of driving FX volatility at the moment means that euro dollar is kind of sitting in the middle of nowhere its recent range has been about 1100 uh, 111 to 114 and change and it's basically at 113 at the moment so not far off the middle of that range
I think again it's it's range trading conditions so one one fourteen sixty to fifteen opens up some some better opportunities um you know if you were looking for that level, you obviously missed the trades at one fourteen but you know that that's chop in the middle of the the trading range and you know it's yeah you know it's it's going to be short, very short term traders with much sh uh, shorter time frames that are going to be making those kind of trades uh not for anyone kind of with a slightly longer term outlook. Um, so let's switch gears to commodities here. I think my t my take on um, on oil at the moment is that it's um, the the fundamentals are s slightly shifting. Uh, we for a while we've had slowing U.S. production. That's still the case, but we've had the the rig count, so the number of oil drillers in the U.S. rise for a third week. So just a bit of an indication that maybe some some US um, shale is, is going to come back onto the market and add to that supply glut. But I think more than anything at the moment, oil is just moving in sync with with risk taking and, and stock markets. So you, you, on a lot of occasion, at least intraday, sometimes the closes vary. So you'll actually see that the um, correlation between the daily close on oil and the daily close on stocks, not that good, but intraday uh, moving a lot together. And so oil rallying here, is it based on any news about the oil market? I would say not so much. You know, it's, it, it rallied when stock markets rallied on, on Friday. And I don't think you could say it's any, um, it's any news from the oil market that's causing oil to rally. And that's what's caused stocks to go. I think they're moving up in sync. So if you are trading oil, certainly still be aware of what's going on with Brexit and the other markets because they're all kind of correlated. Again, um, trading-wise, I, to be fair, have not really been using this trend line that, that worked pretty nicely here. Um, I've been using this, this channel, which kind of chops through this low here, goes to this low. So that was slightly lower. It had a correlation, um, a sort of combination of this pivot area here at uh, 46.20, which I was eyeing. Uh, we didn't quite get there. We basically used this uh, one, two, three, this pink trend line, and we, we've rallied up from there. Uh, with a, a bullish engulfing candlestick. So, you know, one thing to note here is that even if you missed the use of that trend line, um, once you get that bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, so a reversal candlestick after a short downtrend from a known support area, uh, then that, you know, that is a still a buy signal itself at the end of that daily candle. Gold obviously going very much the other direction today. You're talking about yen is being a haven. Gold is a safe haven as well. And um, so we're seeing gold fall away from 1300 again. It's you know it's, it's it's been you know gradually pushing its way up there with slightly higher highs, um, trying to get above that 1300 barrier. Not managed to close above there yet. And I think the risk here is after that sharp reversal that we got on Thursday. Is if we 12, um, 1275, if you can see on a sort of uh, an hourly chart a lot better, has worked to support a number of times here. So if we get through uh, 1275, then I think the, the momentum could quickly start sliding to the downside. We've obviously f we've formed a, a lower high here. So through 1275 basically signifies us making a, um, a lower low as well. One quick thing I realized I wanted to mention just in terms of the yen and havens and all, and all that business, um, the Japan 225 pretty much moves in sync with, uh, with dollar yen and we're seeing again a nice example of um, rallying of support in a range. So you know we've had this um, fairly well defined range here in the Japan 225. Um, worth noting that in my don't believe I had this trend line at any point but um, you know obviously there's been a bit of a reaction there a close below a test and a drop again you know trend lines like that oil one where it's only two touches 
um, you know, often don't work. So, you know, he had, he had the buy there on the Brent chart, that worked well. You know, the buy here on this, uh, this um, <coughs> Japan 225 didn't work so well. So don't use the trend line by itself. Try and keep it in the context of the kind of market we're trading in. You know, this is clearly a range, whereas oil is clearly in an uptrend. So that uptrend line is going to have, uh, is going to work better. So uh, yeah, to finish things off, we've got a um, uh, got a bit of a question going on here in terms of the long term. Um, <coughs> uh, long term direction of US 30 and, and the FTSE um, yeah <coughs> well certainly you've alluded to it in that I'm not sure if everyone can see that if it's gone to the um, if it's gone to the the group or not, but basically, um, will you know the if the UK votes to stay in Europe, that obviously opens the door to the Fed raising rates, uh, and raising rates is obviously a big concern to market, especially when growth is pretty lacklustre. Uh, but if we do if we do leave, um, the uncertainty uh, would cause um, a sell off as well. So yeah two good reasons either way for why the, the market would sell off. I guess I, I tend to agree um, that uh, you know it's, it's there's some definite strong resistance above us in markets as we currently stand and it's going to take a fair bit to get through there and it's hard to really see what can be the catalyst to get us up through those new highs. Um, but I'm not sure that Brexit is the only reason the Fed is um, the Fed has held off raising rates in, in the June meeting. Um, I'm more of the camp that I think they see some genuine risks to the, the global and the US economy. Things have started to slow down. You know, that 35,000, whatever it was, uh, non-farm payrolls, you know, you can't blame that on Brexit. Uh, that's, that's just the US job market slowing down. Uh, you know, and that's been the main reason for wanting to, to hike. So, even if things look okay in the U.S. economy, does the f has the Fed left it too late? And and do they want to hike rates just as we're seeing the best we're going to get? Um, even though if the economy will be fine going forward, if it's slowing, you know that's not normally the time in which the central bank tightens policy. Um, you know, normally it's when it's accelerating is when they tighten. So if the Fed holds back, then and the the economy kind of chugs along. Then uh, you know that that you could argue is enough for for markets to keep moving higher, because the Fed at the end of the day is still backstopping us. So that would be the counter narrative, I would say, um, uh, to you know to those two scenarios. I hope that hope that makes some sort of sense. So I think we'll call it a day there. Thank you very much for everyone attending. Um, good luck with trading this week. It's going to be certainly an interesting one. And uh, let's see how we vote in the referendum. And uh, I'll certainly be talking to you about it um, um, in the weeks ahead. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. Jasper Lawler signing out.